for Kremo Media's policy, I'm Sashni Madli. Joining me today is Congress of the People leader, Musiwa Lakota, here to discuss his retirement and COPE's campaign heading into the 2024 elections. After heading off the party for two decades, what made you decide to retire and, you know, will you still play an active role in the party? Well, it's, it's a, I'm, I'm just following the prescripts of uh, our constitution, what you call the rule of law otherwise, because it prescribes that uh, one can only lead the party for two terms. Beyond that, uh, you have to vacate office and let the, the Congress elect somebody else. And uh, I have completed my two terms. And uh, it's, it's time that I respect the provisions of the Constitution. Um, and when will COPE's new leader be elected? And what do you think the party will look like you know, without you heading it up? We will, uh, we will uh, call a, a Congress because um, that is uh, the body that is empowered to elect uh, a subsequent leader. Uh, as soon as the elections are, are done and uh, our resources allow, we will immediately move into a, a Congress and the, the Congress will then of course take a decision who will uh, do what. But uh, I'm not, re I'm not uh, resigning from the party, I'm not leaving the, the party as such. I will remain available for any functions that the party might want to uh, uh, prescribe or give to, to me. Uh, so I in a sense, I, I'm, I'm, I'm respecting the constitution, but it doesn't say you must res re resign from the organization and go. Most people, I think, think that they must uh, go away so that they don't get instructions for their ju from their juniors, but I don't mind that. I, I, I'd be happy to to continue to, to do the work of the party as, as, a, as a member. Now the COPE manifesto lays out 46 things that need to be fixed in South Africa, and one of those is electricity. So what is the party's plans in this regard? Well, the, the first uh, issue that we are concerned with is that there is a very huge, uh, let me say, body of men and women employed. We really need to reduce that. Government must become less so that we can devote bigger amounts of resources to the needs of the people. If we just feed the number of people that we employ, a lot of people, and then do that, there's very little available for the education for the hospitals, for retired uh, citizens. And so, and so we do think that uh, it is important that uh, apart from the tax that the citizens continue to pay, that we are able to redirect the available resources away from a few employed people and make sure that we can then expand uh, the, the services that can be delivered to the citizens of the country. And this we are determined to do, especially because in the years of apartheid, if you look at the black sections of the population, and I, I, I say black sections because Africans, Indians, colored people, we now uh, have to recall that very many fields of education and training were closed to these sections of the population. The, the, this is the reason why so many of the people that were trained, who were mostly white people, as they left the country and they decided, no, they are not going to stay in, a, in this country, we are ran short of uh, skills. And in fact, th there was such a rush to drive them out that know-how that was required was also driven out. And now, we must insist on increasing the volume of numbers of men and women that we can train, which, which is why we are recommending that South Africa really ought to open voluntary military training. Why military training? Because it is in that area of the military that all the 
skills are available. You want to build cars, you want to build roads, you want to, you, whatever you want to do is available in the military. So we can direct resources there, which is we are directing them for the training and education of the citizens of our country, especially these sections of the population who were prohibited from studying uh, in the fields that were exclusive uh, preserved for the white sections of the population. And can you talk to us about COPE's stance on cater deployment and how you or how a COPE leader should ensure that people they trust are in key government positions? No, we must, we must trust all the citizens. You can't just look at the members of a particular organization and say we are going to give preference to, to them. There are very many citizens who, who don't support the Congress of the People, but who have the capacity to serve the nation. And if you train them and, all, and who are loyal to the Constitution, to the flag and the national anthem and all of that, as long as people are loyal to the country, you can entrust them with all the functions that are available to them. But this thing of cadre deployment is simply, is nothing else but a rewarding friends. And, and we are not prepared to, to go with that kind of policy. Now, coalitions are a real possibility after these elections. Yes. Uh, what is the party's stance on coalitions? Are there any parties you would consider forming a government with and any parties you wouldn't consider? No, the, we we would uh, we were open to coalition with any of the uh, available political parties because all of us have to take the oath of office and swear to honor the constitution and so on. So we were, we are open to all of that. However, we did say it is important for us that we find political uh, parties that like ourselves are willing before they are elected to agree on what it is they are going to do for the people if they are elected. So that when we go to the citizens and say to them, vote for us, we are able to say to them, if you vote for us, this is what we are going to do. That's what we are going to do. This is what you can expect from us. Unless we agree on, 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 this, on those kind of things, we are likely to renege or to act contrary to what the citizens will be expecting. If we tell them before, then they know exactly what they are voting for. And they can hold us to account for what we promised to do. And we will also look if there are political parties uh, who want uh, to favor their friends, such as the African National Congress does and so on. Sorry, they are, not, uh, they are not acceptable to us. So you would consider uh, joining, uh, forming a government with the ANC if they stick to... If, they, just, if, if they abandon those, uh, those uh, favoritism and all of that, that's fine. We can, we can commit to this. But they cannot go on committing corruption, protecting their friends who are corrupt, including the leaders of their own party who are corrupt, who have been pointed out by um, Chief Justice uh, Zondo in the commission thing and so on. Frankly, to do that is corruption of the first order. Now, COPE itself has seen some turbulent years um, yes. with a decline in membership and only two parliamentary seats. What would you attribute this decline to? And do you think the party will survive after the 2024 election? In fact, uh, we, we, I think we must just watch these uh, coming elections. We are pleasantly surprised to see how many people, some of them live in the ranks of the African National Congress, and saying to us, we should have listened to what you said to us when you left after the uh, Polokwane conference. Because there you pointed out that the people we were uh, putting up in the leadership and so on had a track record of uh, a corruption, but we, you were not listened to. Now, very many of them are coming back to say we should have listened because we have nine wasted years. 
Mark you, it's not us who said there is, is wasted years. It's the ANC itself, which says we have nine wasted years. Because people voted for us, we promised things and so on. Nothing of the things that we promised was done. And you can see the state in which the country is in. There's no electricity. There's no water. Communities are in tatters. Schools, there's no hospitals. Uh, uh, patients are lying on the floor. Nothing that is attractive. Nothing that shows that we were ever honest with the people. So it's the NC that has passed that judgment on itself. It's not us. We haven't said that. And I can say that if you look at uh, the record of the Congress of the People, you will not find that at any time there was any one of the leaders of our party who were caught stealing public funds, who have uh, d done all this damage which has been done. But now, you know, we have, we have leaders that are putting money in their pillows, putting it in the sofas and all of that. And meantime, the people are hungry, people have nothing to eat, but they're sleeping on money and so on. And uh, look at, at, at uh, top citizens occupying top positions in the country, like the Speaker of Parliament, who's now accused of having stolen public funds, upwards of 4.5 million rands. What about the poor people who are sleeping under uh, railway lines and who are, who, are, who are sleeping under the subways and so on? Terrible setbacks. That is what the nine wasted years, which the ANC did and which they are proud to do. They are still sending back to parliament. They are still keeping in the list men and women who have been charged with this kind of crimes. It's a very sad state of affairs. And I think the years we spent in prison, in jails, in and out. I mean, I went to Robben Island two times to save time. I was there with President Mandela and others. And I came back, and I still came back, and apartheid was still there. And then I joined the United Democratic Front, and we went back to jail again. When you think about that and the dreams and the beliefs that we had that when freedom comes, it will be really a reward for our people. And, and we actually did get advice and shared it with the leaders, leaders of the NC that because apartheid denied our people education and training, it is important that when we come to power, especially because we have negotiated and we are negotiating on the basis, basis of peace for everybody, we must not drive the white sections of the population out of the country because we need them to continue to help us to, with the training that they have, which we didn't get, to help us to build our country to cultivate our people, especially the young people, so that by the time they retire, they have at least gotten an opportunity to pass on to our young South Africans the skills they, 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 they benefited from the advantages of apartheid, which was uh, only exposed to them. And therefore that we then have uh, young people who are in a position to help build our, uh, our country. Instead, the ANC drove these people out. It went and fetched doctors from Cuba. We don't have doctors now, and our doctors are hanging around and so on. We don't have electricity now. We can't do anything with ESCOM. There is Sasol in the, in the, in the Free State. We used to make petrol and, and all of that from there. ESCOR, the Iron and Steel Corporation of South Africa, gone. We can't even build a car. In 30 years, we still don't have a car. If you look at countries like India, they produce their own cars, trucks, and things like that. South Africa was already 
in a position to do all of the things that they were training them. But now we have nothing. And in fact, by selling, pushing out some of these businesses, companies, uh, state-owned enterprises, we are actually throwing away what little black and white is sweated to build for this country. It's a sad story. And they still say, vote for us. After nine wasted years, vote for us. Let's work together. With whom? With whom you've driven out citizens that have the capacity to do that. It's a very sad story. And lastly, heading into these important elections, there are so many new parties and independents running. Why should South African voters choose COPE? Well, I think f first and foremost, because we pointed out what was likely to happen with the leadership the NC was putting in place. But secondly, we have a track record. Anybody can look at the at the Congress of the People. We have a record that proves that we are incorruptible. We never stole public funds. And if we didn't steal public funds and, and all of that, what would make us now change? When we have, we not only warned about it, but we refused to, st to steal public funds. And we are, everywhere you put us, we are accountable. We will account, we will tell you this is what we did with our money, and that and that and so on. So why, why do you have a, if we, have a if, we, if we had a record of failing the people, we would understand. But we think South Africans can give us a chance and check whether we will betray the commitment of years in jail, in exile, and all of that and the commitment we sustained through all of these years since we came to, uh, to, to freedom. It's for the people to judge. That was Congress of the People leader, Musiwa Lakota, speaking with policy ahead of the 2024 elections.